I'm gonna show you how to rank your local business number one in four easy steps so you don't have to pay an agency to do this for you. And this is gonna get you more leads and more business and you don't have to pay for a single lead or a single ad again. Using this easy four simple step strategy, Will, one of our community members, is now ranking number one for his keyword. He left this post yesterday. I was super pumped to see we ranked number two for a local keyword we've been working on. But as of today, we just bumped up to number one in Google My Business profile spot. And this is giving him more business than he knows what to do with. And he even gave us a little screenshot here. That's his business over there. Um, these other ones are paid spots. So these guys had to pay for it. But Will, with these four simple steps, he's now ranking number one locally for his keyword, which is in a finance niche, which tends to be a little bit difficult. But if you do these four steps, you won't have to worry about them. Let's get started right away. I don't want to waste any more of your time. Number one is really simple, but a lot of people still don't do it, is Google My Business. This can be an incredible asset to generate you endless leads without even the use of a website. There's a couple of things you need to do here. One, you need to obviously verify your Google My Business profile. Once you do, you need to add as much information as possible as you can. Description, contact information, everything. There's no such thing as too much information when it comes to Google My Business profile. So number one, fill it out with as much information as possible. In the booking button, add a direct link to a booking button, whether that's a Calendly link or if you have any other booking platform, you need to add the link directly there. Do not add a link to a website and make them find the link. Number three is make sure that you ask for reviews. This seems simple, but to be honest, we've automated this for many, many businesses. For example, when they finish the service, they get an automatic email or an automated text message to the customer saying, could you leave us a review? And it works okay. But the thing that works by far the most is you as the business owner or your employees asking for a review after the service. And you can do that by downloading this QR code and showing, hey, asking them, we're a small business, would you mind leaving us a review? It would really help us grow. You'd be surprised how many people are more than happy to do that, particularly if you do a good job. Give them the QR code, make it, make it stupidly simple for them to find it. So because if they click or scan that QR code or click this link, it'll take them directly to this page to leave a review, particularly if they're already signed in with their phone, make it as easy as possible for them to leave a review. And if you get a negative review every now and then, that is actually not a bad thing. There's been a study done by Wide Whale and a lot of other entities as well, that every now and then a negative review is a good thing. Because if you answer the, that review well, people that are reading all your reviews and they do, trust me, they see, ah, this guy cares, he's human, every now and then things go wrong, but he responded, he actually cares. And we know now from all these research that a business profile that has a rating of 4.7, 4.8 is more trustworthy than a business that has a review of a rating of five. I know it seems counterintuitive, but the research is there. So every now and then when you get a negative review, which inevitably you will, don't freak out, use it as an opportunity. And finally, with Google My Business, and perhaps the most important thing is to make sure that you treat it like a social media profile. What do I mean here? Well, you can add updates to your Google My Business profile. Add an update, add an offer, add an event. And you wanna do this at least three times a week. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's worth it. Google loves updated content, and this is how you can keep your content nice, fresh, and updated. If you wanna add an update, and you might be wondering, well, what do I put here? You can repurpose one of your blog posts. You put your blog post into GPT, say, hey, can you repurpose this for a post on my Google My Business profile, ensuring that it's less than 1,500 characters, and you can use the same image that you use in your blog post there. Add the post the, there and make sure you have a link to the actual blog post or a uh, call now or whatever that is, but you need a call to action. If you have any types of offers, end of financial year sale, Black Friday, you can add that there. You need to do this as often as you can, treat it like a social media profile. And if you're thinking that sounds like a lot of work, you'd be right, there is ways that you can automate this stuff. For example, we have an automation in our community that shows you when you publish a blog post, we send the contents of the blog post to a GPT that knows what to do, knows to repurpose that content and keep it be, uh, less than 1,500 characters in length, and it'll automatically post it on your Google My Business profile. So you set that up once, and you don't have to forget it, but you're keeping your Google My Business profile nice and updated. Number two is 
creating a lot of localized SEO services pages. I'm going to get this to it. I'm going to explain this in another way. So you want to create for every service that you have a page with the service name and the location, not just the city and the service, but the suburb if you can. That is, if you're a business that can do your services in different suburbs. Let's take a plumbing business, for example. This is a site map here. And let's say the plumbing business, they don't just offer plumbing services. They offer emergency plumbing services, hot water installation, and pipe leak repair, as an example. But in Melbourne, or you can insert your location, whether this is Arizona, New York, wherever, you want to have a location to drop down. For example, here, I've done a location drop down for Carlton Plumbing Services. And if I would click on that page, it would look like this doesn't have to, but something like this, where I have a Carlton plumbing services. So I have the location and the service name. But then within that, I also have emergency plumbing, hot water installation, and all the other services that I offer. And if I click on that page, let's say the emergency plumbing page, then I get taken to a specific page that says Carlton emergency plumbing services. I want to do this because then I answer the user's search intent exactly. If I'm in Carlton or if I'm in insert your location and I click in, hey, emergency plumbing services near me, Google is going to pick up that you are in this location and hey, I've got a page that matches the exact service that you're looking for. And I know that this can seem like a lot of pages, but trust me, it is worth it. This is one of the most simple strategy that you can do. And you just copy the structure or the page layout, but you change the H1, H2s, a bit of the wording to include those local keywords, and that is it. You're not going to get penalized for content duplication. I promise I've done this hundreds and hundreds of times, and this is probably the most successful strategy for a local business. And if you're wondering, well, can I automate the creation of those pages? Absolutely. We've got another automation in our community that helps you do that. For example, we do a little research here where we put all the locations in a Google Sheet. We ask Perplexity to do research in that location if we need it. And then we segment different GPTs to write sections of that page. This was for a real estate company, for example, and it's making us the history section of the page, the what to do section of the page, the property types of that page, and then FAQ section. But you can repurpose this for whatever you want. So whether you're a local uh, plumber or whatever it is, you can do this content nice and easily. So instead of spending months or weeks in generating all those specialized services, local pages, you can do it in a day or in a couple of hours. Number three is local citations, local backlinks, for example. This is other websites being able to link to your profile or to your business. A really, really simple way to do this is just to Google free online business directories in and you insert your location. For example, I've done Australia and you will find some sort of blog post or website that says here are some free local business directories. This one, for example, is giving me 53 free online business directories that I can upload my website to. I want to take the time and do that for every single one of these free ones. When you're doing this, just make sure you take into consideration NAP, meaning name, address, and phone number. That must stay consistent throughout all of the websites where you upload this. Do not change anything. They need to be the same. So this is something that a SEO agency will probably charge you a couple of hundreds or thousands of dollars for because it's local citations or local backlinks. And you can do this for free. Set yourself up a little spreadsheet, go through all of these and see if you uploaded your business to these. Some of them might take a little while to get certified, some of them not, but just make sure you do this. This is the lowest hanging fruit for your business to get recognized by Google that other entities are mentioning your name. This is a good thing. This is what you want. You want Google to trust you a little bit more. And the way, one of the ways to trust you is by creating these local citations. Number four, this is probably the more technical one, but if you can get this right, it's going to have significant impacts on your business. And that is schema, or what's called markup schema, rich results test, whatever you want to name it. Essentially, schema is a bit of code in which Google loves to be talked into or it prefers it. There's a million different types of schema. There's service schema, local service schema, review schema, and it just the list goes on and on. How do you know if your website has schema? Well, there's a free test and I'll leave a link to this in the video description below. 
uh, search results. Let's grab a random business, for example. I'm going to pick here um, this business here. And let's see if they actually have a local schema. I'm going to pick one of the services pages, go to the schema test and place the URL in there. I'm going to go test live results. You need schema for a lot of things. There's also product schema and everything you can think of. There's probably a schema. And again, like I said, this is just a way for Google to instantly recognize what you have on your page. So we can see here that these guys are missing schema. They should have a product schema, location schema, services schema, aggregate review schema. And if you don't know what this all this stuff is, don't worry, it's not too complicated. All you need to do is go to somewhere like perplexity. And we're going to do something very simple here. I'm going to ask it to review the link that I just gave you, act like an SEO professional and tell me what are all the types of schema markup that this page or this business could have. We're going to give it a while for it to do the research and you'll see that it's going to come up, come back to us with the schema that it recommends as well as some bit of code, what this schema looks like. Perfect. So it says organization schema, local business schema, uh, product or service schema, perfect review schema, blog schema, and all these things. So let's ask it now, for example, can you create the local business schema? Can you please create the local business schema for that business? Because it can read the contents of the page, it should be able to understand that. And I just want to show you what this code looks like. And this is it. It's a little JSON file that you need to upload to your header or inject in, into the header of that page. And if all this seems a little bit too complicated, it can be, but it can make the world of difference. And that's why I would recommend if you're a small business owner and you want to do your own SEO so we can show you where to put your schema, you can join our online community, AI Ranking, where we have a lot of support here and we have two weekly Q&As. So if you are having trouble finding where to put the schema for things like that, you can join one of our Q&As, you can share the screen and we can walk you through this in a step-by-step -step guide. We also have many tutorials on how to do this and how to do all of the things that I spoke about and a lot more how to leverage AI to do all this stuff for you. So if you're thinking you need a little bit of support, you want to learn how to do this, you don't want to pay an agency, which you don't need to. And I say that as an agency owner, you should consider joining our community. You can try it out risk-free for seven days. If you don't like it and it's not for you, no stress, just let me know. I'll refund you 100%. And that is it. I hope you found value in this video on how to rank number one locally in four easy steps. I can guarantee that if you do at least three of the four things we spoke about, your business will start ranking higher. If you found value in this video, consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you hit that like. It really helps us out. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.